we continue our series Around the Horn, baseball history in our region. Tonight we're talking with Mike Trombley. He's a Wilbraham native and current resident of the town who spent 11 years pitching in the major leagues with the Twins, Orioles, and Dodgers. Our first question for Mike Trombley, is it tougher for athletes from this region to make it as pros because the weather here can limit practice and playing time? There's no substitute for practice. And uh, I compare it to a kid that grows up around a golf course. And maybe his dad's a golf pro, maybe his dad plays a lot of golf. If he's around the game, you're gonna be more game savvy. And I I've talked about this a lot in the past, is the New England guys, every bit as athletic as any of, anybody across the country. But if you don't play a lot of games, you're just not gonna be as advanced fundamentally, uh, game savvy, I, li I like to say. Um, and even when I was going to Duke, coming from the Northeast, and then going into pro ball, I wasn't as game savvy. I, I, I felt like I was a pretty good pitcher, but guys were a little bit more advanced in the thought throughout the game and pitching, and I think that's just from playing the game more. And we just don't get, obviously, with the cold weather up here, we don't get an opportunity to get outside. A lot of gym work, a lot of throwing off the mounds indoors, but to, there's nothing, nothing compares to playing a game and getting that, getting that experience. Maybe it's another part or an extended part of the whole weather thing, but it always seemed to me, too, in these parts, we don't take schoolboy or high school baseball, wherever we're going to put it, as seriously as sports like football and basketball. We don't take baseball at the high school level as seriously as they do in the South as well. No question. No question. That's one of my my goals and one of my hopes for this area is to try to bring a little bit more higher level baseball. And I, I said this is that the kids that play three sports and I think it's a great thing. I was a three sport kid in high school and I think that's a really good thing. But there's nothing wrong with having great program in the football area, basketball and baseball. So that's one of my goals. And I agree with you. I think that uh, it hasn't been it hasn't been one of the main focuses around here. And I don't know what's done on purpose or by accident, maybe a little of both. Uh, it, it's just one of those things, the hot pockets throughout the country, the Texas, is, the Californias, the Floridas. I lived in Fort Myers, Florida for a long time, and baseball is huge down there, as is football. So, you know, they have better weather, the sun's out a little bit more, but I understand that. But there's no reason why we can't make strides in that area. You are, <clears throat> excuse me, definitely part of the baseball history of this region, which is what this report is part of a series about. But in your major league career, I know you've, you've talked with us about some of the great history you saw being made. I, I know you said, I, I'm thankful some of the places I just happen to be sometimes. Yeah, well, first and foremost, my father was a big fan of baseball history and he passed along to his son. I just love baseball history. I love um, the different eras, the transitions to different eras. And I got some, I'm most proud, people ask me what am I most proud of. I think what I'm most proud of is the fact that a kid from Western Massachusetts got the opportunity to play and to experience and to enjoy. So many times the major leaguers, you get wrapped up in the autographs and the money and the fame and you kind of forget and you're kind of looking to the next uh, day or the year or the contract. But I, I think I'm most proud of to, to say that I really enjoyed what I was doing and enjoyed who I was playing with. I got to play with some of the greatest, in my mind, some of the greatest leaders, mentors, players of all time, Paul Molitor, Kirby Puckett, Dave Winfield, Cal Ripken. I don't think you can find better guys. And, and, and I don't mean players. I mean, obviously, they were tremendous players and Hall of Famers and great players, but they were guys who cared about their teammates and taught the young guys what this is all about. Respect the game, play the game, you know, play the whole game, run the balls out, uh, prepare yourself, don't let anything off the field take away anything on the field. So it was just a great way to grow up as a kid in the baseball, and these were my baseball fathers. I'm so proud to, to say I, I did that with those guys. I'm trying to remember from an earlier conversation we had off camera, <clears throat> how many no-hitters did you see? Well, this is where people say, you know, oh, what does it take to be a big leaguer? Well, it takes some skill. You gotta be the right play at the right time. You gotta get along with your coaches, no question. Injury free, and you need a lot of luck, okay? No question. Mm -hmm. Um, I happen to be, I'm the answer to a lot of trivia questions. I really am. I saw four no-hitters. Um, I saw Scott Erickson throw a no-hitter, Eric Milton throw a no-hitter, Hideo Nomo threw a no-hitter with the Red Sox against us in Baltimore, and then I saw David Wells' perfect game uh, in Yankee Stadium, which was a real special day. I was also there when, let me see if I went to go in order. Dave Winfield got his 3,000th hit. I was there. Uh, I gave up Eddie Murray's 3,000th hit. Solid Kyle Ripken's 3,000th hit. And I was also there when Paul Molitor got his 3,000th hit. So 
and, and you know, it's not like I played two years. 11 years is a substantial amount of time, but it wasn't there 20 years just, you know, churning them out and churning them out and seeing all these stuff. I was the right man at the right time in a lot of places, and I'm just, as I get older, I appreciate it a lot more of how cool that is, and I might be a trivia question answer, and that's okay with me. At, at the time when somebody kept asking, oh, who gave up Eddie Murray's 3000th hit? And I said, you know, I got a little old, but I'm so proud of it now because, hey, there's a lot of guys that I think, like I said, opportunity, that would like to say, hey, at least I was out there and get opportunity, so. You're a member and a director. You've been inducted into and you're a director of the Baseball Hall of Fame here in the region. You're being inducted, congratulations, into the New England Hall of Fame this year. And that, that's, that's some pretty big people. Absolutely. Do you think we're now starting to do a little better job here in this region of, of remembering our own baseball history and, and the, the guys who've really contributed? I think they are. I really do. And i gotta, I got to take my hat off to the people involved in the, the Hoyle Blue Sox right now. They have done a tremendous job to put this thing together. They asked for my help and some guys, some local guys, to get involved and to really reach out to the Mark Wollers and the Capuanos and the Al Stanics and the Danny Delcinos. I really think, and like I mentioned before, baseball history, I would like for my son to know the stories about Al Stanek at Chickabee High School. You know, my, my parents were Chickabee High School people. Um, even the Bill Mojays and the Danny Dolcinos, is, and the list goes on and on and on, and I think they are doing a better job, and I think that the, it's just endless. And I, I've been, the story about the 30, I might get the year wrong, but the 34 Legion team is incredible for me. The Tony King that's, you know, still around, and uh, that, that story, First of all, we talked about this. That's yeah, got to be a movie someday. These, these are the guys that went south to play in a championship. One black player on the team, Bunny Teddy Farrell, they wouldn't let him play down in, I guess, was, was it the Carolina, South, South, South Carolina. Carolina? And the whole team, young kids said, he doesn't play, we all leave. Exactly. And, and we're talking thir 12, 13 years before Jackie Robinson yeah. broke the color barrier. Mm -hmm. So it, it happened in our own backyard. It, that's great stuff. And I think for more kids to know that and to be part of that and to know the names and, and the stories of the past, like my, I mentioned before, my dad in baseball history, I think it's very important for the kids to know what happened before, not just the like, trouts of the world and, and what's going on in baseball today, but to know the history. I know one of the things you worry about with baseball today is that to get the biggest audience and the primetime advertising, the, the big games, the playoff games, the World Series are all late at night. Little kids can't see a game that starts at 8.30. Maybe they see a couple of innings. They're not seeing the end of it. I'm having a tough time making it to the end of these games these days. You worry that we're losing generations of future baseball fans. I do. I, I think that, like the national championship game that was on so late, it ended about 11.30 at night. The kids that love basketball aren't going to watch that. I, I've said this for a while. I, I understand that it's a business, and I understand they have to make money to make this thing go. But don't forget that the fans run it. Without the fans, there's nothing. Uh, and Tom Kelly taught us that. This is entertainment. This is a job for you, but this is entertainment for them. And without them, you know, take time to sign the autographs. Be, so for a kid not to be able to watch the World Series game, and I don't know if there's too many parents out there that let their 10, 11-year-old is going to stay up till midnight to watch the end of the, the World Series game. I just think that's, I think that's a terrible thing. And I understand that business-wise you have to do certain things. But let's find a way to get some World Series games so that the kids can watch it because it is – sometimes it, it, I see more and more lacrosse sticks coming out and less and less gloves, and I don't want to see that. I think that it's a great sport. I'm proud of it. I'm proud that I was part of it. I'd like to see that generated – this generation grasp what, what makes this game so special. America's game. Well, Mike Trombley, always a pleasure to have you in. Thanks for coming, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.